Hi everyone, today I want to teach you how to create the virtual environment and also kernel and how to register the kernel for the virtual environment. This is very, very important skill so that you need to know when you are dealing in any project, in any scale actually. So because, um, so the idea is that uh, when you create a virtual environment in Python, um, the packages that you install are only for that virtual environment. So if you if you encounter a problem for package dependency, package versioning, it will not create a problem for the other projects that you have. At the same time, you can also test different packages. You can test the installation of the different packages. You can test the beta version of the packages. You can do anything you like in a sense. And if you don't like that, delete the virtual virtual environment. Okay. So that's a very very important skill set that you need to know. I would say that after you get familiar with Python, this is the next step for you to learn how to create a virtual environment, all right? So um, the, there are a couple different ways to create a virtual environment in Python. One of them is the, um, you create a Python virtual environment. The other one is to create an Anaconda one. Now we will use Anaconda because that's the preferred way or that's the best way to create a virtual environment, okay? So today we're gonna talk about that. But if you're interested in a different way to create a virtual environment, I can make a video, leave a comment here in the um, comment section. I try my best to create a video to address um, different ways to create a virtual environment besides the Anaconda. But trust me, Anaconda prompt, using Anaconda prompt and using Anaconda, this is a better way to create a virtual environment. Okay, so without further ado, let's actually start. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, this is, um, I'm using Windows machine for the Mac. Also, the procedure is the same. Actually, it's easier. But here I'm gonna type on a, on a conda prompt. I'm gonna open on a conda prompt. All right, great. Um, I have you. I'm using on a conda prompt here in Mac. You go to terminal, which is easier. Like here, we don't go to command prompt. We are going to Anaconda prompt. All right. So the first thing you're gonna do, you're gonna uh, elevate play with this Anaconda prompt here to view the list of virtual environments you already have. Uh, you type conda env list, env is for environment. All right, so let's try conda env list. I have a lot of virtual environment, by the way. a lot. These are all the virtual environment I've installed. And you see how important is that? I have virtual environment for everything. When I was doing PhD, I was creating virtual environment PhD, this one. I, I think I have actually one more also virtual environment, right? I had virtual environment when I was studying for natural language processing or doing coding. When I was doing Bayesian stuff, I was doing virtual environment only for a Bayesian stuff. When I was doing fast AI, I was doing virtual environment for that. Trust me, it's actually one of the most valuable skill sets you want to know. All right, so conda and list show you the list of virtual environment. And look at this one. This is a base. It's a base environment. You see this one? Then the, the uh, environment in the parentheses. This is the environment that you're currently in. So when you start the Anaconda prompt, you're going to be in the base environment, okay? And let's see what's going to happen. So what's the command to create a virtual environment? It's very easy. Conda create dash n. N means for name. And today we're going to create a virtual environment for the name of um, YouTube, YouTube slash uh, tutorial. Tutorial, YouTube tutorial, and now you're gonna say to virtual in here, you're gonna say to Python, hey, what what do I want to install inside my virtual environment? And I say Python version three point nine. You can say anything you like, right? Now you see why why it's actually quite important. Hey, let's say that you want to install a package that requires a Python three point eight, and the environment that you're using, or the, let's say you're using cloud AWS, and the, in the SageMaker the and the version of the Python that is installed is Python 3.7. But for your package, for your work, you need Python 3.9. This is the way to go. All right. So you click enter. It asks you that do you want to install certain packages. So uh, give it some time. Okay, everything is good. Um, let's forget about the warning. Let install the update in that. We type Y. All right. Then 
after this installing this packages, downloading and installing these packages, then we have to go inside our virtual environment. Depends on what you're installing, um, it takes, um, it might take shorter or longer than this. All right, so even it tells you this, to activate this, you need to actually type con to activate um, this or in order to act deactivate. Deactivate means going back to the base environment type uh, con to deactivate. All right, so um, right now, if you type pip install to install Python packages, it will be still installing in the base. And that's what activation means, con activate, YouTube slash tutorial. There you go. There you go. See what happened? Now the name is changed to YouTube tutorial. Now we are inside the YouTube tutorial virtual environment. All right. Let's play a little bit with that. Let's install a couple of packages. Let's install pip install um, numpy, for example. You want to do array manipulation, numpy array manipulation. Trying to install a successful instance. Great. So let's try to install pandas for data frame manipulation and all sort of great stuff that you do with the data frame or with your tabular data actually, right? Now, I want to show you, tell you something. You don't have to install pip install numpy and then click enter, then pip install pandas, click enter, then. No, you can only install them all in one line. Pip install pandas, seaborn is for plotting, matplotlib is also for plotting. Seaborn is also a beautiful product. It has really like a great coloring and a great style. Um, I don't know. Um, let's see what other packages uh, we may. Scalar. Scalar. For machine learning, actually, models you want to develop is all through the um, scikit-learn, and um, I think that's that's about this. We're gonna start with the um, basic packages. There is one more package that we want to install, but I don't. I want to actually go step by step. So there is one more library that we want to install, but let's go step by step. Let's click enter here. So it's gonna install them one by one. So for this tutorial, NumPy and Pandas would be enough. Actually, even those we didn't need them. But um, it's good to actually go over them. Let's give it the time to install these packages. And then after that, I'm gonna show you the cool part of this virtual environment or the actually the creating a kernel. Because up to now, we haven't done much. We have created a virtual environment that would be, that was great. We have installed some packages inside the, inside the virtual environment. That's also good. We isolated this virtual environment from the pre-existing virtual environment I had. That's also really good. So up to now, it's like insisting on really best standard, highest standard. But now let's create a kernel, okay? So, and also register a kernel with this virtual environment. All right, to do this, you can type pip install ipy kernel. All right, so I want to tell you something, guys. You can also use conda install, and um, depends on your need. Conda could be better than pip. So what, let me tell you what, what's the difference. At least one of the, let's see one of the differences between these two. Conda install installs a lot of things for you. Pip only installs the package. Conda installs all the dependency and a bunch of other packages for you. So if you really um, go to, for example, let's say you want to install PyTorch, if you go to the uh, PyTorch website uh, or TensorFlow, for example, you'll see that some of, sometimes the preferred way is to use Conda. Or when you want to install, for example, um, another library, you go to a website and says that uh, try to install using Conda because Conda will take care of the dependency for you. But these are a very easy package that we are using. So we, I'm going to use um, pip, all right? So uh, and at the same point, that Conda can be actually pretty, um, dangerous too because installing some of the dependency that you may not need or some of them uh, like a version of the package you may not need and people you, you might have more control so there is a constant process to each one so let's let's try this so uh, please remember that i could just use ipy kernel when i was installing pandas numpy as well but i want to give you that this step is a little bit different 
because the pp install numpy pp install pandas matplotlib these are the libraries you want you can install them anytime you like I actually show you another way to install them you can install it from the inside the notebook environment but this ipy kernel you need it for the creating a kernel so that's actually a mandatory step so i decided to actually separate this one from the um previous installation let's give it a time there is one more step left here we are not done yet so we keep after this so in this step we install the ipy kernel beautiful all right so what's the next step that is left what's the next step that is left here the step that is left here is that we register the ipy kernel for the given environment so there is a command that you can actually go um, <clears throat> creating kernel condo mm -hmm. none of these they, they, they all explain that but there you go installing the ipy kernel and uh this is the command no python 3 um let's see which one is that uh, this is a command that we are interested in this is a command i have it already here inside uh my notepad it's easier to put in the notepad here all right so let's just change it here so python m ipy kernel install dash dash user the name this is a name anything any name you like i want them it's easier for me to give it the same name. youtube tutorial and this is a display name one of the actual name the other one is a display name the name that is i will tell you what the display name is so once we create an instance of a notebook, I will tell you, tell you what is the support. All right. So this is a command that let's just go ahead here and type it here. Click on it. There you go. Install. Perfect. So now, how do I know what I'm doing is correct or not? So what you need to do is that um, we we need to uh, well. You can all, always write the Python um, script and then use this one, uh, add this kernel or add this virtual environment in your VS Code or any editor that you're using, any IDE that you're using. But today we are going to talk about the um, notebook environment. And I see a lot of videos people talk about Jupyter Notebook. So I will suggest you guys from this point on, don't use Jupyter Notebook. Use Jupyter Lab. It's the uh, enhanced version of Jupyter Notebook. And it has everything notebook has and even more. It's mu that's also much more beautiful interface, right? And it's much more intuitive. All right. So now let's install Jupyter Lab. So pip install Jupyter Lab. Is this um let me see, is this um let's see install so Jupyter Lab, there you go. Just want to see that if it's one word or see there's a conda as well. Everything Jupyter Lab is one word actually. If install Jupyter Lab, trust me, once you use Jupyter Lab, you never go back to Jupyter Notebook. I'm not um I'm not opposed to using Jupyter Notebook, but Jupyter Lab is much, much, much more beautiful than uh Jupyter uh, Notebook, much much more intuitive, better, much better. Like you have all the access to all your virtual environment. You have access to all your um, uh, Python file. It's, it's just uh, much better side. Once you use it, you're not going to go back to notebook. And also, um, the to me at least, uh, it has all the options in one place. I'm going to show you actually the interface of Jupyter Lab in a, in a minute. Give it a time to install this there you go successfully install everything then to launch a jupyter lab what would you do you go to the here jupyter lab that's it depends on your configuration you can either launch in the browser automatically or like my case i disable that 
I don't want it to automatically launch in the um, browser. I disable it in the configuration file for this uh, uh, notebook, right? If you're interested, I can make a video about that, or I can tell you how to do this. So this, no, oh, let's see how nice is the interface. If you're using Jupyter Notebook, you're gonna see the difference between, this is Jupyter Lab, this is the enhanced function. There you go. So how beautiful is this? These are the stuff that I was teaching actually. Sliding windows, like NLP practice, let's create this. But let's see, these are all, the, everything you have access here. I want to create a new notebook instance. Everything you have access here. See? All the virtual environment I have. Look at this. YouTube tutorial. Look at this. YouTube tutorial is available here. YouTube tutorial is available. You can create a console here. You don't have to create a notebook. You can create a console. You have access to terminal. You have access to test file, Python. You have access to everything. Tell me how notebook is better than this. So once you use Jupyter Lab, you never even think about Jupyter Notebook. All right. Let's create them. Um, let's see whether our installation is was successful or not. Name you. You can name it anything you like. I will call it YouTube practice. As another thing. Well, YouTube tutorials, but YouTube. What be different with it? Not capital. To just tell you that it has nothing to do with there. Alright. So let's import C. And let's say um, print sys dot uh, version. There you go. Python three point nine is installed. So we have installed the Python three point nine. Let's try to import uh, numpy as np. Let me import uh, pandas as pd. If the their installation was successful, there you go. So that, that's it. That was the tutorial on how to create a virtual environment and how to register a virtual environment, like create a kernel and register that um, for your given virtual environment, right? And then um, let me, uh, let's see. So I wanna also tell you something. Let's say you want to kill this virtual environment. What, what, what would you do? Let's, this is the current session of the notebook. You can go ahead and click uh, Control C. And then you're gonna get a message here, perhaps that, hey, the environment is not, there you go. Server connection could not be. Let me close this one. I don't want to save anything, you know. And let me close this, let's go back here. So this, we are right now in a YouTube tutorial environment. If you want to disable this, you type conda, deactivate. There you go, you go back to base. You want to activate it, you type conda activate, YouTube tutorial or anything you like. All right, so that's it for this um, uh, tutorial. I hope actually you enjoy that. Uh, leave a comment here about anything you like. I can make a video about that related to virtual environment or any concept you like in Python. Like always, if you like this video, please like and subscribe and share it with your friend. This actually helps me and motivate me actually to make more and more videos. And until the next video, I uh, say bye for now and then um, see you in the next video. But uh, please let me know if you are, there is any concept that you want to know or there is anything that um, you think is useful if I make a video about that. Thank you so much.